Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I welcome class 10th in my lecture series for chemistry. We are on chapter 16 that is about the chemical industries and our topic for today is the Solvay process. Now what is the Solvay process? It is a process which is used to synthesize sodium carbonate also called as the soda ash. This process was developed by Ernest Solvay in 1861. So what is sodium carbonate? Sodium carbonate also called as washing soda is a white crystalline solid and it exists as decahydrate compound. The formula for this compound is Na2CO3.10H2O or you may write its formula as Na2CO3. Why it is called as soda ash? It is called soda ash because it can also be extracted from the ashes of many plants. So how this sodium carbonate is important? Sodium carbonate holds a significant importance both for the domestic purposes as well as for the industrial productions. Sodium carbonate is used for softening the hard water. We have read about it in uh, previous lectures that this sodium carbonate is used to remove the permanent hardness in water that is mainly caused by the sulfates and the chlorides of the calcium and the magnesium ions. This sodium carbonate can also be used for washing purposes in the laboratory. It can also be used to produce soap, glass, paper, caustic soda etc. And it is also used for the synthesis of the baking soda. Now, this formula for the sodium carbonate is Na2CO3, whereas the formula for the baking soda is NaHCO3. This baking soda is also called as sodium bicarbonate, and we know that this baking soda is used for the baking purposes. So just by looking at these points, you may uh, well understand the importance of the sodium carbonate. Now let's move towards the Solvay process. We will first discuss the raw materials used in this process. What are the raw materials? Raw materials are the materials that we usually use in order to produce a finished product. So there are three uh, main raw materials which are used in the Solvay process. These are ammonia. Now it is a very expensive raw material but it can easily be recovered during this Solvay process. Second raw material is the brine. What is brine? Brine is the concentrated sodium chloride solution in water. So the concentrated aqueous solution of the sodium chloride is called as the brine. Third raw material is the limestone. This limestone acts as a source of carbon dioxide and the calcium oxide. This carbon dioxide and calcium oxides are very important um, because they are involved in important chemical reactions uh, that usually um, are done during the Solvay process. So let's move towards the basic reactions in the Solvay process. As you may see here in the diagram that we have an ammonia absorption tower, carbonation tower, another tower in which calcium carbonate is present and the last tower called as the ammonia recovery tower. So we will uh, independently study the chemical reactions occurring in these towers. So the first step is the preparation of the ammonical brine. Now what is brine? Brine is the concentrated aqua solution of sodium chloride. So what we do that we take brine in this ammonia absorb, uh, absorber tower. Now this brine is made up of water and NaCl and then NH3 is fed into this tower. Now when this NH3 and the brine solution reacts with each other they form the ammonical brine. So the first step in the solvay process is the formation of the ammonical brine which is formed when ammonia reacts with the brine solution. And this all happens in the ammonia absorber tower. 
Now, after the formation of the brine solution, this ammonical uh, brine is fed into the second tower, that is the carbonation tower. Now, in the second step, carbonation is done. What is carbonation? Carbonation is a process in which carbon dioxide is consumed to form carbonates or bicarbonates. Now, during this process, carbon dioxide is passed through the ammonical brine. And the reaction, uh, chemical reactions in the carbonation tower are as follow. Now we know this ammonical brine contains ammonia, water, and NaCl. So carbon dioxide will first react with the ammonia and water in the ammonical brine, and they will form the ammonium bicarbonate. This NH4HCO3 is called as ammonium bicarbonate. Please write down its name on your textbook. This NH4HCO3 is called ammonium bicarbonate. Now this ammonium carbonate then react with the third material in the ammonical brine solution that is sodium chloride. And when it reacts with the sodium chloride, it forms sodium bicarbonate and ammonium chloride. This NaHCO3 is called sodium bicarbonate. NH4Cl is called as ammonium chloride. Now, if you look at the first step, you can easily see that here, this carbon dioxide is being consumed to form the bicarbonate. So, therefore, we are calling it as a carbonation reaction. So, at the end of carbonation reaction, we have two substances, sodium bicarbonate and ammonium chloride. Now, if you look at the figure, you can see that this ammonical brine is added from the top, whereas the carbon dioxide is fed from below of the carbonated tower. So, the carbon dioxide is moving from downward direction to the upward side, and the ammonical brine is moving from the upward side towards the downward side. Now, when they meet each other, then these chemical reactions occur. The carbon dioxide is fed into this um, carbonating chamber by uh, the reaction in which the calcium carbonate is decomposed. We will study that chemical reaction uh, in the uh, next slides. So for now, you just have to memorize that in the carbonation tower, the carbonation is done. And what are the end product in the carbonating tower? Sodium bicarbonate and ammonium chloride. Now the third step is the filtration. In the carbonation step, at the lower side of the carbonating tower, the temperature is kept below 15 degrees C. Now below 15 degrees C, this sodium bicarbonate exists in the form of solid state. So it is easily precipitated out from this solution and can be filtered. So in the next step, the sodium bicarbonate is filtered. And in the fourth step, we perform calcination. Calcination of sodium bicarbonate. What is calcination? Calcination is heating of a solid substance in the presence of limited supply of oxygen. So when the sodium bicarbonate is heated, it forms sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water. This carbon dioxide here is recycled and at the end we get our desired product that is the sodium carbonate. Now up till now we have discussed that how the sodium carbonate is formed. Now in the next two step we will discuss that how we are going to recover ammonia in order to use it again for the production of the sodium carbonate. So after calcination we will discuss that first how this lake uh, lime is used for the recovery of ammonia but the question arises how this lake lime is formed if you remember that in the previous slides we uh, have discussed that one of the raw material for the solvay process is the limestone 
The chemical formula for the limestone is CaCO3. It is also called as calcium carbonate. Now this now when this calcium carbonate is heated, it forms calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide acts as a source and uh, here you may see that this carbon dioxide when produced sorry this carbon dioxide when produced from calcium carbonate is being fed into the carbonation tower so that carbon dioxide was given by the thermal decomposition of the calcium carbonate so one of the um, product during this process has been consumed in the carbonation tower we are left with the uh, calcium oxide now this calcium oxide reacts with the water is being reacted with water to form the slag lime also called as calcium hydroxide this calcium oxide is called as quick lime whereas this calcium hydroxide is called as slag lime now after the formation of the slag lime in the next step we will do the recovery of ammonia this recovery of ammonia is done when the ammonium chloride reacts with calcium hydroxide and it forms ammonia calcium chloride and water molecule now this ammonium chloride came from the carbonation tower and this calcium hydroxide was formed on the reaction of calcium oxide with the water these two materials were fed into the ammonia recovery tower and when these two material substances reacted with each other they resulted in the formation of ammonia calcium chloride and water molecule so this is how at the end of solvay process we can easily recover the ammonia now uh, let's revise all the chemical reactions involved in this solvay process with the help of a flow sheet diagram now what was the first step in the solvay process in the first step we prepared ammonical brine solution how that ammonical brine solution was prepared when we mixed brine with the ammonia this ammonical brine solution was prepared in the ammonia absorption tower now after that this ammonical brine was fed into the carbonation tower now this was not the only chemical substance which was fed into the carbonation tower there was the introduction of carbon dioxide as well now how that carbon dioxide was introduced when we heated the calcium carbonate at the high temperature then it got decomposed into two substances carbon dioxide and the calcium oxide this carbon dioxide was fed into the carbonation tower now the carbonation tower contains two substances ammonical brine and the carbon dioxide now when these two substances reacts they form ammonium chloride and sodium bicarbonate this sodium bicarbonate uh, was then heated precipitated out filtered and then was heated under limited supply of oxygen and it results in the formation of sodium carbonate and the carbon dioxide this ammonium chloride remained in the solution and it was fed into the ammonia recovery tower now here we get this our desired product sodium carbonate but we need to recover the um, ammonia because it is expensive and it is economical for us to recover it so for recovering ammonia we have added one of the substance that is ammonium chloride in the ammonia recovery tower we need another substance in order to get that substance we will dissolve the calcium oxide in the water to form this slag lime this slag lime will be fed into the ammonia recovery tower and when this slag lime will react with ammonium chloride it will form ammonia and the calcium chloride now after the formation of ammonia this ammonia will uh, be used again and will be fed in the ammonical um, absorber tower to form the ammonical brine solution so this was the whole solvay process if you look at this flow chart then you can easily see that the major output of this solvay process is the calcium chloride and the sodium carbonate 
all the other chemical substances that are formed during this process are being reused or recycled whereas these two substances uh, are formed at the end of this process what are those sodium carbonate and the calcium chloride so this was all about the solvay process now let's discuss some of the advantages of the solvay process the solvay process is a very cheap process some of the raw materials are very cheap since ammonia is expensive but it can easily be recovered it is a pollution free process because none of the harmful substance is prepared in uh, this process it consumes less fuel carbon dioxide and ammonia are recovered so uh, it also reduces the cost of production of these substances and it produces pure sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate so this was all for today i hope you have understood it well thank you for being with me